Hello everyone. Today I will be explaining you a two extracellular matrix protein and they are elastin and fibrillin. Elastin, it is an extracellular matrix protein which has got a rubbery like properties. It's found at high concentration in the lungs where there is elastic properties required. It is found at high concentration in the arterial walls. It is found in the ligaments, it is found in the skin, it is found in the ciliary genules of our eyes and various other body parts where there is a elastic property is required. Now why this elastin has got rubber like properties? This elastin it is derived from a precursor protein called tropoelastin molecule. The tropoelastin is a precursor of elastin and tropoelastin is converted into elastin molecule and that job it will be done by an enzyme called lysyl oxidase. Now in the first place how do you get tropoelastin? Now the tropoelastin is, it is secreted by fibroblasts. So fibroblast secretes tropoelastin into the extracellular matrix. Once your tropoelastin is there in the extracellular matrix, tropoelastin is converted into elastin mediated by an enzyme called lysyl oxidase. Note that this is an extracellular matrix enzyme and this particular enzyme it needs copper as a cofactor that is CO2 plus as a cofactor. Now we have already seen this lysyl oxidase in collagen biosynthesis. I have, I have a video on collagen biosynthesis and disorders associated with collagen biosynthesis. Links for that are is appearing in the right upper corner and also it is there down in the description below. Now, how lysyl oxidase converts tropoelastin into elastin molecule? So tropoelastin, it has got no, large numbers of lysine amino acids, amino acid lysine. So it, it will be a sequence for that is lysine, alanine, alanine, lysine. So that is a common sequence that you find in elastin molecules. So let me write, that, write down that here. Lysine, alanine, alanine, lysine. This is a common sequence that you see in tropoelastin. Now what this lysyl oxidase does is it is going to convert this lysine into alysine residues. So what it does is it is going to cause oxidative deamination of these lysine residues into alysine residue. So lysine is converted into alysine. I like this. So different three alysine molecules in each of these tropoelastin lysine. So there is a polypeptide chain. So three alysine residues will combine with one lysine residue within the polypeptide chain and that will form what is called as desmosine crosslinks. So desmosine crosslinks see, are it, it is because three alysine residues they will interact with one lysine residue within the polypeptide chain and that makes an interconnected network. This interconnected network as it is shown in the figure up here so there, as you can see there is an interconnected connected network of three alysine residue with one lysine residue. So that interconnected network as you are seeing here in the figure, so that is the one which will give this give rise to desmosine crosslinks and desmosine crosslink formation is the one which converts tropoelastin into elastin and that's why elastin has got a, a rubbery elastic network. So the elastic property of elastin is because of desmosine crosslinks which is mediated by lysyl oxidase enzyme. Now, once you get elastin, so elastin it is basically this elastin it will be laid on to a fibrillin molecule. So fibrillin is acting as a scaffold over which elastin is laid down. So it means you need to have a normal fibrillin molecule for elastin to have its function. Now, in this elastin, it is it has got higher half life, like its half life is 70 years. Sometimes we need this elastin to be degraded, and that elastin is degraded by an enzyme called elastase. Elastase, elastases are secreted by neutrophils, so we call them as neutrophil elastase. So that neutrophil elastase, it is going to degrade elastin into fragments. So elastin is degraded into fragment, elastin fragments and that will be done by elastase enzyme. 
Now, once the elastase enzyme degrades some of the elastin into elastin fragments, we really need to stop that elastase function because otherwise it will go on degrading this elastin. Especially think about uh, lungs. In the lungs, as we inhale these inhalants, so all these toxic molecules, so the neutrophils can respond to it and it, they will go in search of the uh, molecules that have been ingested, so sorry, inhaled. So, once the job of ne uh, neutrophil elastase is done, it has to be neutralized and that neutralization of elastase, it will be done by a protein called alpha-1 antitrypsin molecule. This alpha-1 antitrypsin, it is synthesized predominantly by the hepatocytes or the liver cells. Alpha-1 antitrypsin can also be synthesized by the monocytes, macrophages, especially alveolar macrophages can synthesize alpha-1 antitrypsin. Now, alpha-1 antitrypsin, it will, it will take care of elastase enzyme. So, elastase enzyme is taken into the active site of alpha-1 antitrypsin and it will be degraded into its neutral fragments. Now, there are some cases where there can be a deficiency or decrease in alpha-1 antitrypsin molecule. So, it, it, can be a, it can be because of mutation in a gene coding for alpha-1 antitrypsin. Now, the common mutation that you find in alpha-1 antitrypsin is AG. GAG is coding for lysine molecules, so lysine amino acid and the mutation is, it is converted into AAG which is coding for glutamate. So, lysine is replaced by glutamate and because of that replacement, so what happens? So, alpha-1 antitrypsin, it will decrease its affinity for elastase enzyme, thereby it is not neutralizing elastase enzyme. And also note that alpha-1 antitrypsin uh, can also, uh, enzyme activity can also be decreased by smoking. So, cigarette smoke which has got reactive oxygen species and that particular reactive oxygen species, it can damage or it can oxidize methionine residue within the active site of an alpha-1 antitrypsin uh, protein. So, when the methionine is oxidized into its sulfoxide form, especially in the critical region of active site of alpha-1 antitrypsin, that means alpha-1 antitrypsin decreases its affinity for elastase enzyme. That means elastase enzyme is not neutralized and that means there will be overactivity of elastase. That is why smoking causes decreased activity uh, uh, of alpha-1 antitrypsin enzyme. Thereby, it increases activity of elastase because simply it is not degraded. That means it will go on breaking down elastin in our lungs. Now, a disorder that is associated with this is called as alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Now, this alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, it's an autosomal recessive condition because of mutation in a gene coding for alpha-1 antitrypsin. This can be found in the hepatocytes because hepatocytes are the major uh, tissue where alpha-1 antitrypsin is synthesized. So, what will happen? Because of this kind of mutation here where GAG is replaced by AAG, that is lysine is replaced by glutamate, so, your alpha-1 antitrypsin is not secreted into the, uh, into the blood because it is just accumulate abnormal and alpha-1 antitrypsin. It is accumulated in the endoplasmic reticulum. So, that means it will go endoplasmic reticulum of hepatocyte. It will become uh, enlarged or engorged. So, that means it can give rise to fibrosis of the liver which is called cirrhosis. So, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency can lead to cirrhosis and later it can give rise to uh, liver failure. Now, what will happen with the deficiency of alpha-1 antitrypsin? So, plasma levels of alpha-1 antitrypsin decreases. So, that means alpha-1 antitrypsin action on elastase is also decreased and that means elastase will have overactivity here. So, that means it can lead to uh, destruction of the lung tissue or the elastic tissue. So, one of the organ that is affected worstly in alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency is the lungs because alveoli, which are in, uh, in, uh, whenever we inhale these molecules or uh, dust particles or any uh, infective organisms, we release elastase. So, by neutrophils or alveolar macrophages, they release elastase. That elastase activity has to be controlled by alpha 1 antitrypsin. Now, when you have deficiency of alpha 1 antitrypsin, elastase activity is increased it is going to destroy the lungs and that can give rise to a disease called panacinar emphysema. Emphysema which is also basically it's a, it is one of the type of uh, uh, one of the disorder which will give rise to chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. 
So the pan SNR emphysema is one of you know, one of this uh, disease that is seen in alpha one antitrypsin deficiency. Now, what are the signs and symptoms that you see here? So, because of the emphysema, so patient will have shortness of breath, will have ronchi, and also will have wheezing, and ultimately it will affect heart, giving rise to congestive heart failure. So, these are some of the signs that you see in alpha one antitrypsin deficiency. That is, patients may have liver cirrhosis and liver failure, patients will have panus in our emphysema giving rise to shortness of breath, wheezing, ronchi, ultimately giving rise to congestive heart failure. So the treatment is uh, we use uh, uh, liver transplantation and also infusion of alpha-1 antitrypsin is also tried with uh, good results. This is about alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency which is related with elastin which is a connective tissue protein. Let me explain you about an, another extracellular matrix protein called fibrillin. This fibrillin it is acting as a scaffold over which elastin molecule basically the tropoelastin molecule is laid over fibrillin and then tropoelastin will be converted to elastin. So the normal function of elastin in our body it really needs normally functioning fibrillin molecule. Now this fibrillin molecule, it will be coded by a gene called FBN1 gene. This FB, FBN1 gene that is fibrillin 1 gene, it is coded, by, uh, it is present over a chromosome number 15. So what is the function of this fibrillin molecule? So the fibrillin molecule, it is acting as a scaffold over which tropoelastin is converted to elastin and it will it is, it, will, it is important for the integrity of the connective tissue and also it is important for biogenesis and maintenance of elastin in our body, especially in the extracellular matrix. So it means normal functioning of elastin, it needs normally functioning fibrillin molecule. Fibrillin molecule in the extracellular matrix, it also it keeps transforming growth factor beta. So this transforming growth factor beta, it will be sequestered in the extracellular matrix thereby it decreases the overactivity of transforming growth, back, uh, growth factor beta. Now if there is any mutation in a gene coding for FBN1 that is fibrillin 1 so there will be mutated fibrillin molecule. Now when the fibrillin 1 is mutated that means elastin function is also altered and also sequestration of transforming growth factor beta is also decreased that means transforming growth factor beta is free to function now it will have a over activity or over functioning of transforming growth factor beta will be present. Now because of this what happens? So the tissues which contains elastin can be affected in uh, Marfan syndrome and also a over activity of transforming growth factor beta can also be found in Marfan syndrome patients. Now what are the signs and symptoms that you see in Marfan syndrome? Triad of Marfan syndrome it includes long limbs, it includes a dislocated lens and aortic root dilatation. Now there are uh, main systems that are involved in uh, Marfan syndrome and that is the skeletal system which is involved. In the skeletal system you can see arachnodactyly that is long slender fingers you can see in patients with Marfan syndrome. Patients with Marfan syndrome they will have disproportionate body that means upper limb to lower limb ratio basically upper body portion and the lower body portion ratio is affected and they will have high arch to palate and also patients will have pectus carinatum or pec pectus escavatum it means basically indentation of the chest or maybe protrusion of the uh, chest can be present unexplained stretch marks can be seen in Marfan syndrome patients now coming with the uh, eye manifestation so the eye man one of the eye manifestation that you see in Marfan syndrome is the dislocation of the lens and the lens dislocation can be seen in, uh, in 360 degree angulation but most commonly lens dislocation will be superior temporal dislocation that is upward and lateral dislocation that is the most common uh, direction of lens dislocation that you see in Marfan syndrome patients. Now, Heart problems that are seen in uh, Marfan syndrome, it involves regurgitation uh, because of the mitral wall prolapse or the aortic wall prolapse. So mitral wall regurgitation or aortic wall re valve regurgitation can be seen in Marfan syndrome and that can give rise to undue fatigueness, palpitation, enzyma and also the cold arms and cold feet can be seen in Marfan syndrome patients. 
Along with the heart problems, so patients with Marfan syndromes, they can also show lung manifestation, especially the spontaneous pneumothorax. Spontaneous pneumothorax is one of the common complications that you see in Marfan syndrome patients. I hope this video has helped you in understanding uh, the importance and the disorders associated with two extracellular matrix protein, one is elastin, other is fibrillin. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, so please place them in the comment section below. I will answer them as soon as uh, possibly uh, that I can.